we put pressure on ourselves for not being realistic and not heeding to that, Islamic marriage strategies and the Quran and the Sunnah, inshallah. So there are two criteria for the sisters and four criteria for the brothers, inshallah. We are not going to emphasize that. But I want to give you one thing. Prophet Muhammad sallam, has given you one that you cannot go without. Which one is that? The deen. Very good. So I will give you with a one visual that hopefully you will not forget. Okay? So we now know that li jamaliha, her beauty is a given. As we mentioned, Islam is a practical religion. And now the wealth, the lineage, the family, and the deen. So, number one on Prophet Muhammad's list, the most important of all, is the deen. So we'll put it up. Deen is number one. Very good. Deen is number one. Don't forget that. Right on. But in the, in the process of choice, we know that we go for beauty first, and I will explain the reason why behind it, inshallah. But really, the most important foundation is deen. So number one. Now, she is beautiful. Bonus. Put a zero. She's a ten. All right. Now she's also rich. That's a hundred percent. Put another zero here, man. Now she also comes from a good family, good upbringing, environment. That's batting a thousand. Now take away the deen. What do you got? Three zeros. Enjoy. <laughs> Good life, mashallah. Now we already know the sisters is looking for this man on the white horse and all that stuff and the things that we talked about earlier. And that's where the dilemma comes in. Why? Because they've been reading this uh, story with this guy and this guy that's coming in with uh, all these fantasies, right? When they're young, they've been planning this wedding. It's true. It's true. And I'll tell you, I've actually uh, been to a wedding where the guy had to come in on a white horse. <laughs> Wallahi, Eki, I'm, I'm telling you the truth. He made it very difficult for all of us. How do you top that? And had to sign a wedding with a feather and it was um, beautiful. It's beautiful, romantic. It's true. It's very true. But what happens into that process after choosing the spouse and so on? Now you have to fight. Fight whom? <laughs> now the parents are coming in on one side. Religious aspect is on one side. Then you have the urf, traditions and cultures on one side. You're born and raised here, but your parents still do what? With all due respect, of course, I speak, come on, Tika Acha G Kehala, you know. <laughs> Been there, done that. I love biryani, by the way, don't, you know, don't. It's true, there, you're in the dilemma. Your parents want you to have this. And by the way, your parents have already chosen a spouse for you, but you don't know it yet. <laughs> uh, I have heard this. Uh, uh, one brother got a phone call. Hey, son. Go pick up your wife from the airport. <laughs> She's coming in a... Now what do you do? You're in a dilemma. You want to please your parents because you don't want to disobey them because there's rules and regulations that has this one, two, three. But now you want to live your life. You do not want to receive your wife in a parcel where you have to sign for her and go, ah! <laughs> for the first time in your life to see this woman. Against the Sunday, by the way, you're supposed to see her, right? So now what happens? You go through a struggle. You go through a struggle. And then you, who do you know, who do you please? Your parents, yourself, culture, what? How about pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How about following the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa You can't go wrong. سبحان الله والحمد لله ولا إله إلا الله سبحان الله والحمد لله ولا